Ah, uh, the things we'll do for love, huh? Like, say, agreeing to run a marathon. When, in case you all don't know, uh, the marathon is actually inspired by an ancient Greek soldier who ran and ran and ran until he dropped dead. <laughs> great idea, great idea, Chris. It's 2005 and my girlfriend Tessa floats the idea uh, about running the San Diego Rock and Roll Marathon. Here's the thing, I love Tessa. <laughs> Tessa loves running. And the calculus that I'd done early in our relationship was if I could love running, then maybe we could love running together, together. And if we did that, our love would grow and blossom. Problem is, Tessa, uh, she's a natural born runner, five foot one, hundred pounds. I'm more like Godzilla in running shoes. <laughs> but look, there's just something about this idea of running a marathon that takes hold of me. You see, seven years into our relationship, I still want to woo Tessa. Prove my love. And what better way to say I love you than agreeing to run 26.2 miles? Sure, honey, that sounds great. <laughs> I'm not really thinking about the 26.2 mile part of this. What I'm imagining is this Tessa and I training together, and then we're like running together hand in hand across the finish line. And We've overcome this beast of a race, and our love grows that much stronger. But something does give me pause. You see, Tess has already run a marathon with her best friend who collapsed at mile 23. Her friend implored, Tessa, finish, go finish, go finish. And Tessa did. That's not going to happen to me. No, not going to happen. The reason it ain't going to happen, because we follow a strict training regimen. Months and months of training. February, March, April, May, leading us here. Sunday, June 4th, our moment at the starting line of the San Diego Rock and Roll Marathon. <laughs> now let me tell you, we're ready. I'm ready. The race starts, and this... Adrenaline-fueled rush, rock bands are playing, running Elvises everywhere, screaming, chanting, signs, banners, and I'm like, yeah, baby, I'm on fire, yeah, let's go. Mile three, riding that adrenaline wave. Mile nine, ah, still fucking solid, yeah. Mile 12, man, not even halfway. Mile 16, <laughs> got this blister, shit in the sun, man, it's baking today, what the, it's supposed to be nice and cloudy, and by the time I'm reaching mile 19, I'm sort of feeling like that ancient Greek dude, uh, <laughs> like, if I go another step, I'm gonna fucking die. Thing is, you talk to anyone about running a marathon, and they, you'll in in inevitably hear about the phenomenon called hitting the wall. Well, most people hit the wall around mile 21, 22. I'm hitting the wall at mile 19. I still got seven miles left to go. I look over at Tessa, wondering how she's doing. Tessa is like floating on air, moving like a machine, just gliding. I don't know about any of you, but when you're literally doing the hardest thing you've ever had to do in the world, and the person next to you is making it look like it's just some easygoing Sunday jog, <laughs> my reaction, I start getting pissed. I start getting pissed at Tessa. Thinking to myself, how dare you? How dare you make this look easy? How the hell did I get myself into this mess? Tessa must be picking up on my struggle fest. She looks over at me. Hey, Chris, how you doing? 
All right, look. This is a crucial moment in the race, and actually a crucial moment in my relationship to the woman I love. Although it's true that yes, agreeing to run a marathon, that's one way to say I love you, but in a moment like this, if I really want to prove my love, how about honesty? I should say, Tessa, I need help. Because after all, we had agreed, because of what happened to her friend, hey, we'll walk to the finish if we need to. And if I'm being honest, I need to walk. I feel like I cannot run another fucking step. That is the truth. But this other part of me takes over. Let's call it the macho part, where the idea of walking to the finish just feels like an out-and-out failure. Uh, I start imagining these party conversations. So, how did the marathon go? Well, I hit the wall at mile 19, and Tessa and I walked the final seven miles. Oh, so did you run a marathon or did you walk a marathon? <laughs> so my pride, my stubbornness is kicking in hard. I am not walking to the finish. No. So I look over at Tessa. I give her a a thumbs up and a smile. I, yeah, I'm fine. I am not fine. I am not fine at all. I assure you. So now we're approaching mile 23, or is it 22? Yeah, no, 23. Wow, things are starting to get really fucking weird around here. We're, we've been at this water station before, haven't we? Is this a, is this a test? This is a test. I'm being tested, yeah, it's a test. This is a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. Oh my God, 20, mile 23, mile 24, oh my God, mile 25, only a mile left to go. Man, crowd's getting louder. Must be getting close to the finish. Oh, crowd's getting garbled. Must be getting close to the finish. Water, grab it, oh, drop it. Oh. Take a look at it. Oh, shit. It's gone. The water's gone. You don't know what you got till it's gone. Must be getting close to the finish by now. I got to be there. Am I, am I there yet? Dad, Dad, are we there yet, Dad? There it is. I see it, the finish. Oh, I'm fucking walking now. I, I stumble. Next thing you know, I got these two guys, what, on the other side of me, and they're holding me up. Just, come on, man, it's a fight. I got to get there. It's step, it's step, and step. Whoa, fuck, what? What the fuck? Whoa, blue sky. Palm trees, I'm on my back? Paramedic? Smelling salts? Chris, do you know what month it is? <laughs> yeah, J June? What about the year? 2005? Do you know where you are right now? Yeah, I'm at the finish line of the Rock and Roll Marathon. Oh, Chris, no. No, only a half mile left to go. Fuck! Next thing you know, I'm on a gurney. I'm in the back of an ambulance, and I, I can't move my legs. Wait, what the fuck? Holy shit, am, am I dying? I, I'm dying. Tessa's talking to the paramedics. I, I don't want to be a vegetable. I'm a DNR. Do not resuscitate. DNR. I don't want to be hooked up to machines. Their paramedic jumps in the back. Chris, you're not a DNR. You're going to be fine. We just have to get you to the hospital and get you some fluids. At the hospital, Tessa and I find out from the doctors what led to my downfall. Rhabdomyolysis. He tells me, you killed your muscle cells and protein was leaking into your blood. You were in kidney failure. You could have died. <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh, okay. 
Maybe I didn't hit the wall after all. I was just dying. <laughs> Later that night, I'm in the hospital and Tessa leaves the room and I find myself alone. I think back to a moment shortly after the smelling salts and Tessa's next to me holding my hand and I'm laying there and it's like she's in this hazy kind of dreamlike state. It's amazing what delirium and kidney failure will do to a moment like this, all right? And I say to her, Tessa, I, I just have to ask, uh, did, did, you, did you finish? <laughs> Tessa takes my hand. She says, Chris, no, no. I'm here. We made it. We made it far enough. Dad, are we there yet? It's 2018, 13 years after my marathon meltdown, driving from San Diego to Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I look in the rearview mirror at my two daughters when I turn around and say, no, we're not almost there. Then I look over to the passenger seat and my wife, Tessa, we're exchanging an eye roll and a smirk about our daughters. You know, I guess Tessa was right. We did make it far enough. Thank you all. Thank you.